Fantastic. Okay. Where are my slides? All right. Uh, thanks for having me, everyone. Um, there's going to be a lot of puns in this presentation. As you can see, you know, EC, e-commerce, and then static, because Gatsby. So ecstatic commerce. Woohoo! Um, this is a pretty fancy location. I think normally this, uh, it's a ballroom. I think the mirror is very distracting. Uh, at least I, I found that to be. So please look in the middle, not at yourself. Cool. Um, now normally when I'm in this country, I'm, I'm sweating a lot, but this is very comfortable for me. The temperature is, is perfect. Um, so I'm actually visiting our uh, Singapore office um, this week, last week and this week. Uh, and normally I'm based in our Amsterdam office uh, in the Netherlands. So this is, this is the view from my window normally. Uh, down there is the swimming flower market. It's on, uh, on the canal. And what you can see the church is, is a melodic church. So every hour we get a little melody. It's great. Um, and what you see uh, on the, the right there, uh, that's Sir Nelson. Uh, you might be able to see a dock down there. Uh, and Sir Nelson is on call, uh, as you can see. The API is up and running, so he can, he can chill. Uh, this is actually a poster of um, Increment. It's, it's a magazine about uh, building and deploying software at scale. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can, you can look it up online. It's pretty cool. There's some good, some good issues. Now, uh, quickly about myself. My name is uh, Thorsten Chef. Um, I'm originally from northern Germany. Uh, but because no one can pronounce that, you can just call me Thor. Um, I think, you know, being in northern Germany, that's close enough to um, the Norsk kind of um, Mytho mythology, yeah, so Thor. Uh, and, and then I guess my Twitter handle is pretty self explanatory Thor Web Def. Um, I also got my .def domain, so can you guess what it, what it is? Thor Web .def? <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, so, what I do, I'm an integration engineer at Stripe, uh, which means I work with many of our largest customers and partners, um, helping them build. Uh, great payment experiences, checkout experiences, uh, generally more complex integration, uh, integrations like multi-sided marketplaces. So, you know, if you think of booking.com where um, a customer pays and then uh, the payment has to be routed to um, a hotel or, you know, a property, uh, that's kind of a marketplace. So Uber or Grab, oh yeah, Grab is a good example here, right? Um, payment goes in, needs to be routed uh, to a driver. That's, that's what we do. And I do that in continental Europe. Now, uh, what I want to do with you today is what I call uh, a Jamstack Jam session. Have you heard of the term Jamstack before? Raise your hand. Brilliant, yeah. So um, Jam stands for JavaScript APIs and Markup. Um, and it's you know, pretty much a static site, uh, like, like Gatsby is sort of a Jamstack application. Um, where you use JavaScript and APIs and potentially, you know, mark, um, markdown, markup, uh, static files to serve your content. And so uh, a Jamstack Jam session actually means if you have your laptop with you, um, you can join me. You can, you can pull it out now, open it up. I think there's a guest network, and we can actually get cracking. Or you can follow along, uh, and the resources are available on uh, thor.news slash ecstatic. Uh, if you want to, to follow along. OK, if you have your laptop, now's the time. Crack it open. I can see you there in the front row. Put that water away. <laughs> OK. Now, let me see, can you, can you see that? Yeah, so Gatsby has a fantastic documentation. There's also um, Jason uh, Langsdorf, he's on, on the DevRel team at Gatsby, uh, and he does many live streams, which, uh, which are really great to, to follow along. Uh, and there's the Gatsby CLI uh, that you can install. I've already done that. Uh, and then we can simply run Gatsby new, 
um, to scaffold a new project. So we're going to do that here. I'm in my document folder, Gatsby new. Uh, we're going to call it Gatsby, let's say, Singapore. Cool. Now, while that is running, and I hope it is running, we can actually look at hooks. Quick show of hands, who here has used hooks in React? Okay, yeah, good amount of, sorry? Okay, yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, so the reason why we need hooks, and actually what we're gonna use is the effect hook. Um, you're probably familiar with the component uh, dit mount function um, that you would use in your, in your class components. Um, now, in function components, we can use the use effect uh, function, which is exposed by React, um, to get sort of the same effect um, of component dit mount. Uh, and the reason we, we need that is because later on we're going we're gonna to load Stripe.js, which is our JavaScript library, um, which is going to be available on the window object. Um, but because Gatsby side are server, server side rendered, uh, we can't actually access the window object you know, in our normal React code. So uh, that's why we need to wait until everything is mounted, and then we can, we can access the window object. Cool, let's see if we, oh wow, still running. <laughs> Should we talk a bit more about hooks? Um, what's, that? <laughs> what's that to say? Um, can you read the size? Is that good? Could make it a bit bigger. Bit bigger? Like that? Even bigger? bigger. Yeah. Right, right, right. I mean, we're not actually really gonna look at that. We're just sort of, Fantastic. Okay, time has passed. Now let's um, open this in VS Code. I guess uh, uh, didn't work, so ah, whatever. Just gonna come on. Open folder. Sorry. There we have it. It's like I've never used a laptop before. Okay, here we are. So uh, the structure is here. We have our um, pages. Um, we have our index page in here. And what you can see, uh, our index page is a function component uh, that simply returns here our layout, uh, the SEO and all of that stuff. Um, now we actually want to use the uh, use effect uh, hook uh, in there, so we need to turn this uh, into a quick function. I'm just going to return that, uh, and then what we can do is simply copy this. We don't have the variable here, we're just going to set this to 10 just to see if it works, and then let's actually. Is that size okay? Can you read that? Uh, higher. Well, now that's a bit awkward. Uh, I'm going to zoom in when it gets important. <laughs> can you see that? Yeah, cool. So what we actually can do now is we can use uh, Gatsby develop to run our uh, development server. And then when we go back, open our local host. Oh. Already have an error, fantastic. Use effect is not defined yet, yeah, that makes sense. We need to actually load it. What did I do? Oh yeah, look at me. This is very collaborative, I like this, this is great. Ha, huh, there we are. Can you always come to work with me? That'd be good. Awesome. And as you can see, okay, our um, effect hood is working. Uh, great, so we have, that, we have that set up. Now, um, 
what do we need to do? Yeah, so actually now we'll quickly register a Stripe account um, because we're going to use the um, new Stripe hosted checkout. Um, you know, because we're building a static website, we're actually not having a server, so we're sort of uh, outsourcing the whole checkout piece to Stripe. So what we can do is we can go to you know, stripe.com slash register. Actually, have, have you heard of Stripe? Anyone doesn't know Stripe? Okay, wow. So everyone, oh yeah, no, that's okay. So uh, what we do is online payments infrastructure. Um, so you can sign up and uh, within five minutes, well, probably 20 minutes, what, what we're doing here with all my talking, um, you can accept payments online. Uh, as a developer, uh, it's really, really easy to do that. And that's sort of what I'm trying to demonstrate. Now, um, let's do this. Let's quickly sign up a new account. I'm going to do Thor plus Singapore React JS. Well, actually, maybe. That's cheat. Trump.com. Thor. Now, can we get like a great Google password or something? Or actually, let's just do. Yeah, I mean, this is really, when you have your laptop and you follow along, it's not as boring. Cool. Oh, what? That is, that is crazy now, okay. Um, let's do React SG, SG React JS. No, that, what? Okay. Not a robot. Come on. Cool. Now let's quickly pin that tab. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to use um, checkout. So we're going to go into the settings, into the checkout settings. And we're going to enable checkout. Cool. Um, when we're operating in live mode and we're doing, you know, we have a client only implementation without a server, um, we actually specify our, our domain uh, in live mode to make sure that, you know, actually only your domain can redirect off to, to the checkout page. And now what we need to do, because we don't have a server site component that can validate, um, you know, the products and the SKUs and um, actually calculate what we need to charge, uh, we need to tell Stripe um, about the products that we're selling. So um, my cool ebook, um, let me see if I can do Singapore dollars. Uh, let's do 10 Singapore dollars. I'm not going to upload a picture with that internet. Good luck. Um, and now, once that happens, uh, what we do in the background is actually we spin up a product uh, object with an associated uh, SKU. SKU stands for stock keeping unit. Um, and so we can see our SKU here. We have a SKU ID. Can you see that? Um, we have a SKU ID. And then we actually have a button used with checkout. Um, and we're just going to follow along there what, what we have to do. So you can look at the steps here. Um, we need to load um, Stripe.js. We need to provide a button. Uh, the button has a row link because it actually uh, redirects off to, to a Stripe hosted checkout. Um, we then need to initialize um, the Stripe library with our publishable key. Um, and that is here going to be living on the window object. Uh, and that's why we're using hooks. Uh, and then lastly, you know, when the button is clicked, we can simply call redirect to checkout with our SKU ID to then kick off the checkout process. And here we can uh, specify success URL, where we uh, re return back to you know, if the payment was successful, or a cancel URL if uh, the customer doesn't actually go 
through the checkout. Cool. And I hope that is clear. So with Gatsby, um, you know, because service I rendered, uh, the way you load Stripe JS uh, is actually, well, at least what I do is use a plugin. Um, so we can here find our Gatsby Stripe plugin. We're not using the Stripe checkout. That's that's for the old Stripe checkout. Uh, what we want here is uh, the Stripe JS library. So what we can do now is uh, we can install that plugin. Uh, let's quickly kill the server. Install the plugin. And then what we need to do is in our Gatsby config, we need to register our uh, plugin. Gatsby config JS. There we are. So actually going to make it the first plugin. <laughs> and then, yeah, what's more to say here? The internet is slow. We can sort of look at the next steps that we'll need to do is uh, we actually need a button. So let's, still running, wow. Let's simply put a button here. Okay, we're gonna call this by my ebook. Um, let's give that a quick save. Are we still? Wow, okay. Still running. There we are. Now, if we fire this up again, just to, to quickly verify that the loading of the plugin um, all worked fine. Uh, we can go back to our page here. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, and if we now check on the window object, and actually let me zoom that in, we can now see that we have um, the Stripe library loaded. Oh, we also have the buy my ebook um, function here. Uh, button, sorry. Uh, and we actually now need uh, a function that triggers when the button is clicked. So we're going to just put a redirect to checkout function here. We don't really have any input param. We're just going to hard code the SKU ID um, in. So actually uh, empty there. And then what we do for now is just console log that were clicked. And then the button here we can simply do on click. And then we can specify the redirect to checkout reference to our function. That is now compiled. And so, okay, that is all hooked up. The pipes are working. So let's let's have a look what we need to do next. Um, yeah, so we need to initialize Stripe uh, and then make Stripe um, available uh, in our function later. So let's quickly give that a copy. So as I mentioned, because the Stripe library is on the window object, uh, we actually need to do that here in the effect hook. So I can actually, uh, we need a variable here that would be helpful. Uh, and you can see now Stripe is not defined. Um, that's because it's on the window. So if we give this a save now, uh, that's all good. Warning, yeah, okay, Stripe. And now we can, can you see that? Uh, if I ask people, I'm just gonna say it needs to be bigger, so. Ignore, <laughs> ignore my question. So um, what we need to do is redirect to checkout, but actually let me, let me maybe zoom in here and give you a quick. So what you can see is actually um, the Stripe redirect to checkout returns a promise because what happens here is we're actually sending off a request to Stripe um, with the SKU ID, with our publishable key, the quantity, all of that. 
Um, and then Stripe goes off and you know, we evaluate, does this SKU ID actually belong you know, to the account with this publishable key? Uh, and then we do the calculation for the total amount and all of that uh, on our end. And then once that was successful, we return a checkout session back to the client, which is then used to, to redirect off uh, to the checkout. Um, and so the reason why this is a promise, um, if there was an error, for example, uh, we actually return back instead of you know redirecting off, we return back an error object to you uh, when you know the promise resolves. So uh, on the result object, you can then extract uh, the error message if if there was one. Cool. So we actually want to you know because we have a promise here, we can use async um, await. So that that is what we're going to do. And as I mentioned. We can extract the uh, error object from the results. And now, because we're using await here, we need to uh, declare our function as async. Okay, that looks good. Now we get a warning because the error is actually not um, not used. You know, to get rid of that, we could just simply do console warn and paste in. There, there, cool. Now, is that it? I think that might be it. Let's give that a reload just to to be fresh. Uh, actually, you can you can see a, a Stripe generated warning here. You know, you can test Stripe JS um, with an unsecure connection, but when you put this into production, uh, you actually want this to be secure. Cool. Now, if we click here, ah, in order to use checkout, you must set an account or business name. Okay, this is actually a pretty helpful error message. So the error message actually links us off into our Stripe account. We can just um, Thor's. I know I'm selling ebooks, but that just came to mind right now. Now. Okay, I think that is the only one. Let's give that a try again. Here we are. We send that request to Stripe. We can kind of zoom in here a little. And now we can use uh, any Stripe test card. I have them here in a sort of auto expander. Um, boom. And now in test mode where oh, Google wants to save it. Uh, and as you can see, I, I didn't change the, um, the result URL. So uh, yeah, this page doesn't exist. So we would actually have you know, to, to modify that here. And I guess what we could do is we could go to localhost, was it 8,000? What was it? Yes, a thousand, and then we have page two. So actually, page two on success. Um, let's go there, and if it's not successful, we just uh, no, sorry, for the cancel URL, we just go back to our index page. Uh, now let's quickly see if that works. No, what? Success must start with, oh yeah, okay, okay. Now, that isn't secure, but um, let's try that. Cool, and we can actually go back here, cancel URL, cool. So that worked fine. How, how are we on time? Five minutes. Um, yeah, so there, there's kind of two things we could do now. We we could actually take this and um, deploy it to to Netlify. Um, if you're interested in that, you know, we, we could do that. Or alternatively, uh, we could look at um, using the Stripe API to retrieve all the products we have on the account um, using you know GraphQL as, as Thomas laid out earlier. 
uh, and sort of builds a dynamic version that, that serves up um, all the products we have in Stripe dynamically. Sort of what's, what's your preference? Looking at the GraphQL. Okay, I'm not going to hook it in, but actually we can. Um, so I've written a tutorial here in Gatsby. And so what we've done uh, right now is sort of the easy one button example. And then we can look at the advanced example where we're importing SKUs uh, via a source plugin. Uh, let's see. So as Thomas mentioned, um, a source plugin, what it does is at build time, uh, it goes off to the Stripe API. It pulls the data about our products and SKUs from Stripe and then makes it available as static data. I believe it's just JSON um, that is stored as part of the build process um, into our page. So in the end, it's static, but it's sort of dynamic at build time. And actually, the cool thing we can do is that Stripe generates webhooks when you know products are changed, for example, in the dashboard. Um, and we can actually point that webhook uh, at a Netlify build hook um, to then automatically rebuild our page, pulling in that new content. And so we can actually set up this you know, continuous deployment with our static page. Um, and I think J Jason has actually done um, a pretty cool example where He's built a, a clock that literally redeploys, I think, every second, like rebuilds every second and sort of shows you that idea of, okay, you probably wouldn't do that in, in, in real life. But, you know, the idea that building this based on some trigger is actually a pretty valid approach. Okay. Um, um, but so what we can do then here is um, we can use the... Uh, Gatsby source Stripe plugin. Uh, we we say we want to pull in all the SKUs uh, at build time, uh, and now in in this case actually the SKUs can't be accessed with our publishable key. Um, so here, what we actually would do is we we would generate a restricted key, um, and the restricted key can access can read uh, our products and SKUs, uh, and then we would put that into an environment variable. Um, and later on, for example, with Netlify, you could specify it as a, as a build variable in, in the process. Um, and once we've done that, what we can actually do, uh, that's the .env here. Um, we can create a component that lists all our SKUs. And um, Thomas had mentioned that there's sort of different queries. So here we use a static query um, and we can then query all the SKUs uh, for our products. Uh, what we want to get is all the Stripe SKUs. Uh, we go, do go down in the edges. So at build time, what the plugin actually does is go off to Stripe, get the data, and then insert the nodes um, into, into uh, kind of our unified GraphQL uh, API within Gatsby. Uh, and then we can specify exactly all the, the attributes that we want. Um, we need the ID, the SKU ID later. That's what we need to, to tell Stripe about. Uh, the currency, the price, and the name of the SKU. Um, and then we can simply render a component with the return data that maps all of our SKUs. Um, and here just outputting kind of the, the name of the SKU in a paragraph. Um, cool. I think we're at time. Uh, what's interesting there? I mean, we can we can look at this. Yeah, so we would then have, and here I'm I'm still in the tutorial using using a class component, um, and we can actually look. Uh, I think I have this deployed. So if we look at the advanced example here now, um, we have three products. And when I click the Buy Me button, you know, depending on that, um, we go off kind of to buy that product. Um, there's also an example that builds a cart. Um, you can build that in as well, you know, if you, if you want to support kind of multiple product buying. Um, but here, really, what it, what it does is it renders, and this component here, what you've, uh, what you've seen, 
if we go back, this component renders, I've called it SKU card. Um, and then the SKU card, again, has here our async function redirect to checkout. Um, and the SKU in this case is now handed in from the SKU card. So when we generate the SKU card, um, we render it with, with the SKU ID uh, as a parameter on that component. And then on the onclick event, we can actually hand that in. And so, you know, built this once and kind of hand it off to, to our um, marketing or operations team or whatever. And they can, for example, then use the Stripe dashboard or you know some, some content management system um, to, to modify the data. And when that happens, a webhook is fired, uh, which kicks off our redeploy uh, pipeline to pull in the new data. OK, I'm, I'm going to stop here. Uh, but again, well, actually, I, have, I think I have some more slides. Sorry. <laughs> well, it's really just Stripe is also hiring. Sorry. I'm, we're not sponsoring. I'm sort of hijacking this here. But just want to mention uh, we, we have a couple offices around the globe as well as remotely um, here. The Singapore team has actually grown quite uh, immensely. It's a really sweet team. If you're interested here in the second row, there's actually a bunch of them sitting there if you want to chat with them or you know, come up to me later. Um, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you very much uh, for having me and for your attention. And <laughs> please do, do um, tweet at me with your questions, feedback. This is very much a learning experience for me as well. Or you know, shout out your, your questions now. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, just curious. So, as I, as I understood, you were showing how to um, deploy Stripe form with a guest file. Do you guys also use guest file at Stripe? Um, do we use Gatsby at Stripe? Is that the question? Yes. Um, so, we don't. As far as I know, we don't use it at Stripe. So, you know, our documentation or things like that. Um, that sort of bespoke systems that we've built in terms of like content management. Um, there is experiments going on, sort of using you know Gatsby for tutorials, for example. Um, I think that that would be uh, a great use case. If yeah, you know, I think anything really that isn't changed a lot, but is read a lot. Um, so you sort of you write it once, and then you know it's basically just a, a bunch of read operations. That's where where Gatsby is really good, um, well, as as one example. Um, so that could be a potential area. But as it stands today, we we don't use um, Gatsby in production at Stripe now. But many of our users do. <laughs> well. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, so actually, all of our dashboard is a React nowadays. So it's uh, it is a single page application, uh, and the dashboard actually uses GraphQL to access data. Um, so if you want to use GraphQL with Stripe, you you can just join us, and then you can use it. <laughs> no, we're we're actively looking into into that, but. Um, yeah, so that's sort of the stack uh, for the dashboard uh, React uh, application. We actually have the d design team um, manages all of our React components. So we have kind of an, an internal component library um, you know, for anything in the dashboard, buttons, pop-ups. All of that is kind of in our uh, own internal component library. Um, and then we have the API, which is built in, in Ruby, I think, custom version of Sinatra and then uh, MongoDB kind of sitting all on AWS as it stands today. So to follow up on the question, like you said that many of your customers use uh, guest buy uh, or guest kit. Like, do you know like what size? Like, is it usually small companies or like one, one developer workshop? Or like yeah, I think it's, um, it's different. There was this one good example which I now forgot, I think it was some sanitary product. Um, so that was 
more kind of a medium-sized company, you know, kind of a good good size. Was working with sort of a, um, a kind of marketing agency to to set that all up. Um, but yeah, I think in in that space, well, as it stands today, it's sort of more kind of the SMB world uh, that is that is using it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's that Harry's. Yeah, the right. women's razor. Cool. Yeah, so go talk to that guy. He he knows his stuff. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Any more questions on Gatsby? Not on Stripe. <laughs> cool. I guess chatting, networking. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>